So now what if there are many stages? So you just had a two stage problem. And the general idea here is all right. I mean, a two step in one choice and its outcomes. Um, if I want to do more. So for example, in the same, same question, suppose that you are in the, as a student, you were wondering whether to take the raincoat. Suppose you decide to consult the weather channel. So again, for simplicity, let's suppose it has a uh, yes, no answer, it's gonna rain or not. In practice, of course, they give it a percentage of, it will have a 40% chance of rain or something, which means you can never tell if they're right or wrong, unless you study their results over a long, long period. So it's a yes, no answer. And of course now, these forecasts say it rains are wrong, that is, they can be wrong, but if they do say rain, you're saying, hmm, I thought it was a 30% chance of rain, but now I'm, hmm, they say rain, so I'm going to bump it up. It doesn't, just because they said it will rain, doesn't mean it will rain, but it's likely to change it. So you have to have new probabilities. That is, after you have the information, you revise your prior uh, probabilities. So let's, let me show you what this looks like. So I've now set it up as on a, on a spreadsheet kind of basis here. And um, I either have, I don't, I don't look at the uh, weather channel and I have no, no news. So it was what I had before, uh, a value, my best choice at a value of 0 0.8. But if I look at the weather channel, it will be say a forecast rain or not in a simple case. Now, you have to say, what is the probability that the forecast was correct? Well, you're going to have to, to do that. You're going to have to have some kind of estimate of the performance of the, that information. So you don't really know what the chances are they will say rain or not rain. So that's an unknown. But then so that you come back to where you were before, but now you're, this is your, the setup for the basic problem before you had the weather channel, you now have, all right, yeah, uh, it has, I still have rain or no rain, but this time the probabilities of rain or no rain depend upon the forecast. So if um, I uh, looked at, it was a rain forecast, the probability of rain or no rain has been changed. It's more likely to rain. You believe it's more likely to rain. So this is now different than if there was, it said it's going to be a clear day, in which case you'd have different ones. So that the problem, given that you have a second stage here, you know, some further information gathering, you're going to have to calculate all these probabilities. And therefore the expected values are different. And then if the outcomes are here are different and the probabilities are different so that you have adding on a section will change a lot, basically. It changes all your information. Technically, it's called that you had the prior probabilities, what you started out with, the 0.3 and 0.7 here. And then you had the, what's known as the posterior probabilities. And it doesn't refer to your tush. It's just the after the fact problem, um, after the fact, the fact being that you had some kind of information, in this case, the Weather Channel report, which revised your prior probabilities and made you go through. So now what you have to uh, have is that it changes your decisions, of course, that's like expected, and the calculations get complicated. In general, you have to go through something called a Bayesian uh, update, um, which I'm not going to explain here because that's not the point of this and we're not going to go into that detail, um, but uh, this is a complicated process. That's the point I want to, to mention. The second aspect is, given that you have all these probabilities, how do you solve the problem? Well, I'll just outline it uh, for you, and it's an example of what is known as dynamic programming, which is not part of the course, but for those of you who may have heard about it, it gives you a hook to go on. If, if not, uh, let me just, uh, you haven't heard of it, that's fine. Uh, but it basically says that the approach is to say, if I were at the last stage uh, I, and I knew what these values were, I could s find out what, what, what would be the better one under this circumstances 
and I would choose the better of these and use that to calculate the outcome here. In other words, you'd work your way back through the tree, starting at the end, and step by step, phase by phase, step by step, you'd kind of, okay, if I were at the end, I would choose, say, the raincoat. In the other case, I might not, and derive the outcome, and now I would be able to calculate it. So it's, it's the term of art used, it's folding back. It starts at the end and works your way through the analysis to find out what is your, your better choice. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because the, what the message is that in order to do the decision analysis for anything but the simplest case, it isn't a simple thing. You have to go through a lot of calculations and you have to, in order to do it, you have to have a lot of more information on the relative accuracy of the weather channel forecast, for example. And you have to go through uh, a, uh, a Bayesian analysis to figure out the answers to these unknowns here and so forth. It isn't easy to set up. Um, if it's, I can teach this stuff how to do it. I've done it before, but it's a painful process. And here I've only shown a most trivial uh, situation. That is, you only have two choices, two possible outcomes, two possible out, uh, responses from the Weather Channel. It is, uh, it gets quite complicated. So just imagine that instead of, this is for two choices, two outcomes, two stages, just a magic extension of three of each and you're now talking about a really, really complicated, and I have just a set up, and I haven't deliberately, I haven't tried to show you the way to calculate the revisions of the prior probabilities that you learn about the future. 